So who wins in the battle over Disney's board? Tryon Fund Manager, led by activist Nelson Peltz, has nominated himself and former Disney CFO Jay Rasulo to Disney's board, aiming to shake up the Disney's direction after years of underperformance. Tryon, holding nearly 2% of Disney's shares, seeks to replace two current board members, Mar- Maria Elena Lago Massino and Michael Foreman, with Peltz and Rosulo replacing them. Blackwell's Capital, another activist investor, has proposed its own slate of three new directors in response to Tryon Met campaign, alleging that Tryon motives stem from hostility towards former CEO Bob Iger rather than genuine concern about Disney's performance. The outcome of the proxy battle will largely depend on institutional investor as they hold the majority of Disney's shares while individual investors and company investors, insiders have a smaller stake. Their vote could still influence the final decision and the ongoing struggle over Disney's board composi- uh, compensation, composition. Disney activist Blackwell's, Blackwell's proposal of splitting up the company in proxy. Again, same story. Blackwell's floated the idea of Disney separating its own real estate, which it says they represent about 44% of its market cap cost into independent publicly REITs or series of investment vehicles in which the shares can uh, interest uh, uh, can be distributed to shareholders. Anyways, with all the stuff that's going on here, you would think Disney's r- learned from all these flops back to back to back on what they're going to do. And by the way, if Disney really wants to make a big comeback, guess what they would do? They would go get on their knees and beg, beg a man named Johnny Depp. Johnny will give you $300 million. Wow. Do you remember when they asked Johnny the question, can you pull up Johnny Depp's response when asked about Pirates of the Caribbean? Have you seen his response? I haven't. Oh, brother. It's dope. <laughs> oh, my. Rob, you've seen it before, right? When Johnny Depp responds to Pirates of the Caribbean, if they paid him $301 million, would he take the job back? His answer, tell me you find this, Rob. This is... Uh, um, and when was this, Patrick? Oh, this is two years ago. Johnny Depp, uh, uh, Amber... Uh, uh, th- this is the Amber... Heard, um, uh, uh, oh man, Rob, if you f- the reaction when they asked him, Johnny Depp questioned, maybe it's Johnny Depp questioned. Well, Tom, before I go into that, Tom, can you give some thoughts on what's going on here with the Disney's board? Because obviously, try on, I think they're the sixth largest institutional holder of shares in Disney, and he's a multi billionaire. two guys that are fighting for this. This guy's a one and a half billion dollar guy, I believe another guy's a four and a half billion dollar guy, he could be the one. Can you kind of pull that up and give your thoughts yeah, on this? Yeah, so let me, let me pull it back for America. This is your favorite sports team, has missed the playoffs by missing the shot at the end of the last game of the regular season. They missed the playoffs. You're upset. All of these private equity ones you hear on the board, they're the players. The players all want to win. All these investors in Disney want to win. They, they are not winning on the stock market. They are not winning on profits. And so now the players are in the locker room. They've got the, the old coach has come back to coach them, Bob Iger. And now the players are saying things to the media. What we need is more discipline. What we need is a, is a different free agent. You've seen this, Pat, right? The players, the players at the end of the season are unleashed. And that's what these – so think of it that way, America. Think of it as – or world, the world that's listening – as this is a bunch of players on the team that want to win. These private equity people all have big investment. They want to make money. They all agree on one thing. Disney is messed up, It's be, and they had to bring Bob Iger back to see if it could lead it out of the ditch. And everybody wants to improve performance, and they're all saying that they have an idea to do it, and but they need control. So they're all arguing about having – enough votes to get control that's what that's what's going on here when they say i want to put directors here they want to have an election and vote on how, what the direction of disney is then one of them has gone public and blackwell's capital and said listen we've got theme parks we've got hotels we've got tv and a lot of the cable stations aren't doing well hey espn is doing so terribly why don't we join voices with all of our enemies and just make a super cable station good idea bring me a proposal on that and they're trying to, to, to say this is the way to fix it. They just want to make money. All these folks just want to make money, By the way, and the, Disney is a mess. Check this out. Watch the stats. October of 2005 is when Bob Iger becomes CEO of Disney. October okay. of 2005, which is what? Roughly 19 years ago, 18 years ago, he becomes CEO, right? At the time, Disney's worth $47 billion. He becomes chairman in 2012. Companies worth ninety billion dollars. Wow. Okay, he steps down as CEO and executive chairman February of 2020. At the top, 
$328 billion, crushing it. Ooh. Absolutely crushing it. This is Disney Plus era, right? Then 2021, he steps down as executive chairman, returns as CEO in November 2022. 2014 valuation of Disney was $160 billion. Ten years later, 20, uh, 2024 valuation of Disney is roughly $170 billion. In 10 years, valuation increased only $10 billion, okay? That's not a good thing. That's 5% increase of the company's valuation in 10 years. By the way, that's like putting your money in a savings account at a bank. That's the kind of returns Disney brought. Is, is that correct or no, Tom? That's Moore, exactly right, and that's why now, all these investors are pissed. So so then Nelson Pelt, who owns Tryon Partners, his net worth is around $1.5 billion. He's a number six institutional holder. There's another guy also, er, uh, Ike Perlmutter, who is a $4.5 billion guy. He sold Marvel to Disney. He's one of the biggest shareholders. He owns a ton of equity. He's a pro-Israel guy, conservative guy himself. At this point, you know who owns the most Disney shares? Institutional. Right now? Vanguard's number one. Really? They own 8%. Weird. BlackRock Black Rock is number two, 6.6%. State, State Street is number three, 4%. But the biggest owner in the last couple months of, uh, of uh, Disney. Warren Buffett? No, not at all. It's actually South Park is, is what the biggest owner is. They've owned <laughs> Disney and Bob Iger <laughs> with the oh, clips God. that they've done uh, on them. So last time on Tuesday, we announced anybody that buys a... Uh, uh, the future looks bright hats and the gear. And we said, we want a million people wearing this gear during these strange times. We want people walking around saying, hey, I believe future looks bright. And getting the reaction from other people when you wear that shirt at the end of today's podcast, we'll be taking a raffle. We have everyone's orders. We'll take a raffle. Two people win, will win a ticket, $750 to come to the vault conference. We'll be announcing that at the end of the podcast. And top of that, today, we have some stuff that we haven't given away. We're continuing this. We sold out of a couple of our hats, by the way, uh, on Tuesday. Instantly, three hats sold out. But anybody that buys any of these gears, Rob, can we show this on the camera so people can see it? Pick any one of these hats and one of the Future Looks Bright shirts. Okay, go a little lower. You got the purple one. You got the white one. Pick any of these trucker hats for some of you guys that want the Vitamin logo with U.S. flag next to it. We also got the PBD Podcast hat there as well. You pick the black or white Future Looks Bright hat. Choose any of these combination hat. And a shirt you do next week. What we're doing is we'll be giving away uh, one of the Ryan Garcia signed gloves, a Trevor Bauer signed ball, and five signed Choose Your Enemies Wisely live next Thursday, next Tuesday at the end of the podcast. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.